So a little while ago, I made a video on how Atlas removed the Raido Kuzanoa DLC in the new port of Persona 5 Royal. In that video, I touched briefly on how in China and Korea, Raido Kuzanoa is usually removed from Atlas games in those regions. But in the new Persona 5 Royal port, the DLC has been removed from the game in all regions. And now that I finally got in my hands on the new Persona 5 Royal port, I can confirm that everything that had to do with the Raido DLC has been entirely removed. But if that was the only thing removed or changed in the new port, well, there'd be no reason for me to make this video, would there? You see, the new Persona 5 Royal port isn't only great because it brought the game to all modern platforms, but the game is also looking the best it ever has and running at frame rates higher than it's ever seen before. Keep in mind that on the PS4, the game was locked to 30 FPS. So considering that alone, this port is easily the best way to play Persona 5 Royal. But this port also has some odd downgrades, so to speak. So please join me today as we talk about some odd downgrades that happened in the new Persona 5 Royal Port, even if most of them are pretty minor, why they happened, and how you can even restore them in some versions of the game using mods. But before we properly get into it, I just want to mention that I'm less than 300 subscribers away from reaching 10k, so if you end up enjoying this video and feel so inclined, consider subscribing. Also consider following my Twitch, where I'm currently doing a 100% run of the new Persona 5 Royal Port, and after that we'll be playing through the Persona 5 Royal randomizer mod. Okay, and without further ado, let's get into the video. So the first change we're going to be talking about in this video is one I already covered briefly in my last video, however, we're going to be going into more detail this time. That change being the Devil Summoner Raido Kuzanoa DLC being removed from the game entirely. And when I say the DLC was removed, I don't just mean the costumes that came with it. The accessory that normally comes with the DLC, the Kuzanoa Tubes, which lowers skill cost by 25%, has also been removed. It also seems Atlas wanted to do a pretty thorough job of making sure this thing was gone from the game. Going into the files for Persona 5 Royal, all of the character models that would typically pertain to the DLC have been outright deleted from the game. Furthermore, viewing the music files that would typically play when wearing the Raido costume in battle instead greets you with a few minutes of silence. But although the model and music have been removed, the items themselves are actually still in the game, though you'd only be able to access them through mods. If you mod the Kuzanoa Tube's accessory back in, it actually retains its full functionality of lowering skill cost by 25%. But I'm sure more people are probably curious what happens when you mod the outfit back in and equip it, even though the music and model are missing from the game. Well, for starters, any save that I already had the outfit item modded into would refuse to load me into the metaverse, even if I didn't have the outfit equipped. So because of that, I tried already loading into the metaverse on a save and then giving myself the item while I was in there, and this is what happened. Well, that's cool. Yeah, the game just won't let me. It just won't let me. Let me go back. Huh. Okay. No, that's fair. No, I, 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 I understand why you would do that. Despite all of this, on the PC version of the game, there is a way to get the Rido DLC outfits back using mods. Using the Rido DLC restoration mod by a mudkip, you can once again use the Rido DLC outfits in P5R. Granted, you'll have to use some sort of cheat engine or mod menu to actually give yourself the outfits, since they obviously aren't given to you through the DLC box anymore. Now, the thing with the Rido DLC is it was removed for a very specific reason. In the original versions of Persona 5 and Persona 5 Royal, the Rido DLC had actually already been removed from the Korean and Chinese versions of the game. This is because the design of Rido's outfit is actually based on the design of imperialist Japan uniforms. But Raido's DLC wasn't the only thing removed from Korean and Chinese versions of P5 due to imperialist Japan references. There were other things removed from the game for that exact same reason, and as you may guess, just like Raido, they're removed from the new port of the game, regardless of what region you're playing from. Here's something that got removed that you probably never even noticed existed in the first place, but now that I'm pointing it out, you'll never be able to forget it. The shoes that Ryuji wear have the Japanese Rising Sun symbol on them. Or at least I should say, they did have the Rising Sun symbol on them, but this has been removed in the new port. The Rising Sun symbol can be associated with, once again, Japanese imperialism, which makes it a controversial symbol in Korea and China. Staying on the topic of the Rising Sun, the Rising Sun symbol had actually showed up in another part of Persona 5 Royal as well. The Almighty Icon, used in the original version of Persona 5 Royal, greatly resembles the Rising Sun flag. 
Because of this, in the original PS4 version of the game, the Almighty icon was changed to look like this in the Chinese and Korean regions. Once again, this change has been carried over to the new port of Persona 5 Royal, but now affects the game in all regions. It's a bit odd to me that this censorship was carried over to the new port in the first place. Obviously, it makes sense to keep the censorship in the Korean and Chinese versions of the game, but censoring it in all versions of the game seems... odd. Especially when Atlas had a game come out only a few months ago that included its own Rido DLC. Regardless of what the reason may be, you're in luck if you want to restore it on the PC version of the game. The P5R Texture Fixes Project mod by Keculism restores both of these Rising Sun changes back to their original form. Personally though, I've opted not to mod over the Almighty icon because I actually like the censored version better. Now let's move from downgrades that you may not have noticed to a downgrade you've certainly noticed if you've played the new port. When triggering an all-out attack in the new port of Persona 5 Royal, there's this new fade effect that happens when you do so. I've seen a lot of people complain that this happens, so let me explain exactly why. This fade happens to help accommodate for players who may suffer from photosensitive epilepsy or other similar conditions. And as an idea on its own, that's a great thing. The only problem is it isn't an option. While it's great they're adding new things for accessibility, whose idea was it to add this and not add an option to turn it off? Of course, with there being no way to toggle this off, it means it's forced onto everyone, and people aren't exactly too happy about the fade. Funnily enough, this specific instance of the fade, and we'll talk about another one shortly, has a very weird oddity where it doesn't exist on the Switch version of the game. Every other platform that the new port was put on has this fade, except the Switch version, which doesn't. I presume this might have something to do with the fact that the Switch version doesn't run above 30 FPS like all the other versions of the new port do. Perhaps this effect only needs to be applied when the animation is running above 30 FPS. I, I guess. I, this is my best guess. But I don't see why the Switch version of the game wouldn't have this fade for any other reason. Whatever though, because, and I think you know where I'm going with this by now, this can be reverted on the PC version of the game using the No All Out Attack Fade In mod by Cherry Cream Soda. Lesser known, but the opening movie to the game, Colors Flying High, also has this red fade effect applied to it. This fade on the opening happens on all platforms, even the Switch. But hey, if you're on the PC version, this can even be fixed by using the Colors Flying High Restored mod by Light8227. If you're on console though, I guess you'll just have to live with the fades. Moving on, on the fast travel map, there are little images beside each location to show you what they look like. In the new port, these images appear much more zoomed in than they were in the original version of the game. This is due to the fact that these images were apparently upscaled in the new port of the game, but weren't brought back to their original size after the fact. This leads to them appearing much more zoomed in than they should be. Once again, this can be fixed in the PC version of the game using the fixed rail map image scale mod by Secrecy. Okay, we've got one more odd downgraded change to talk about in the new P5R port. However, this one relates pretty strongly to some endgame content, and I mean like last arc of the game endgame, so if you haven't beat the game and you care about spoilers, I recommend you leave this video now and perhaps return at a later date after you've beaten the game. Of course you would be doing this after liking the video, obviously, because it was such a great video that you enjoyed very much. Okay, I hope you've liked, subscribed, and then left the video if you don't want to see the spoiler content because we're about to get into it. During the last palace of the game, Akechi and Joker unlock a showtime together. If you've played The Last Palace, you know that already. What you may not have noticed is this billboard in the back that says two sides same coin. Or should I say two sides some coin, because that's actually what it reads in the new port. Here's a comparison of how both billboards look close up on screen now. Now, you may have the same question I had when I saw this, and that question is probably... Why? Why did it ever read two sides some coin to begin with? Well, I had the same question because it certainly doesn't seem like the type of change you'd make intentionally. So I went to YouTube and tried to find out how this billboard looked in the original version of Persona 5 Royal on the PS4, but in the Japanese version. And sure enough, in the original version of P5R in Japan, it always read two sides some coin. When the PS4 version was localized, it was of course changed to two sides same coin. For some reason, the port undoes this localization in all versions of the game. This is probably something that you'll never end up noticing in gameplay, but now that I've pointed it out, it might just annoy you forever. I can't help you if you're on console, but if you're on the PC version, I can at least point you back to the Persona 5 Royal Texture Fixes project we mentioned a little earlier, which also fixes this problem. Also, it's a blink and you miss a type thing, but did you notice the fade from earlier is actually in this showtime now as well? I, I hate like you. 
This leads me to believe this fade effect actually might show up in other places in the game that I don't even know about. Who knows, if that is the case, I could end up making a whole video on this fade at this point. Regardless, those are the downgrades made in the new Persona 5 Royal port. If you want more content like this, consider subscribing to the channel. I plan to finally continue my Vanilla vs. Royal series very soon, which will not only lay out the differences between the Vanilla and Royal versions of Persona 5, but will also outline some other changes made in the new port. I don't know if it'll be my next video per se, but it's certainly soon to be a priority. Anyways, that's all I have to say for now, so thank you so very much for being here.